Coming up, Labour's path to victory. Three things Sir Keir Starmer should do to defeat the Tories at the next election. Keep watching. Before we get into it, please remember to hit like, subscribe and get notified of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Starmer needs to do three things to stand any chance of forming the next government. Number one, start attacking the government's Brexit deal for the pile of pants it is. I left the Labour Party for a number of reasons, but a big part of it was Keir Starmer's massive error in trying to placate Labour's Leave voters in Northern England. He says he accepts this Tory hard Brexit as a done deal and that he doesn't want the UK to rejoin the EU. This despite the fact that we are heading towards a breakup of the UK with the majority of people in Scotland and Northern Ireland wanting to rejoin the EU. This Tory Brexit has demolished our trade figures, wreaked havoc in industries like fishing, farming and broadcasting and has destroyed Britain's soft power and global reputation. A strong leader of the Labour Party should be trying to persuade the voters of the need to rejoin the customs union and the single market as the first steps towards reversing some of this damage. These steps may even be enough to keep Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom, although the damage may already be done. A Scotland within the customs union and the single market might also be less inclined to vote for independence, although of course whichever decision is made by our friends in Scotland and Northern Ireland should be respected. The cautious way that Keir Starmer tiptoes around Labour Leave voters is turning off the majority of potential Labour voters like me who backed the Remain vote. Number two. Be strong on Tory corruption. This is how Tony Blair defeated the John Major government in 1997 by highlighting Tory sleaze. But the levels of corruption in Boris Johnson's government dwarf anything from the Tory party of the 1990s. Starmer should focus on raising public awareness of how the Tories are handing over billions of pounds of taxpayers' money to Tory cronies, family members and donors. Labour should be calling out each and every link and association between the Tory party and those companies propelled to the front of the queue when those lucrative taxpayer-funded Covid contracts were doled out without open tender or due diligence. Number three. Favoured by 76% of Labour voters, with only 12% against, form an alliance with the other progressive parties and find a formula to select one progressive candidate to stand against the Tories in each constituency. And for every right winger shouting fix or vote rigging, it really isn't. What is rigged is the undemocratic and anachronistic first past the post system, FPTP, where every voter in hundreds of safe constituencies is ignored by the two major parties as they concentrate on winning marginal constituencies. The Tory party has mutated into being the Conservative stroke UKIP stroke Brexit stroke Unionist party, so the right wing vote is not split in Britain whereas the left-wing vote is fragmented between five parliamentary parties. I'm a progressive left-leaning voter who voted for the Labour Party in the past and right now I'm inclined to vote for the Green Party. But under the existing FPTP system, there is no point in me voting either Labour or Green as my constituency is a two-way marginal between the Tories and the Lib Dems. So I end up having to vote Lib Dem to stand any chance of defeating the incumbent Tory MP. Don't get me wrong, I'll never forgive the Lib Dems under Clegg for delivering the Cameron Condem coalition government that implemented austerity. But a vote for the Lib Dems under Ed Davey is still my best option under the current system. But how can this be right? that I have to hold my nose and vote for a candidate I don't really want to vote for in order to oppose a candidate from a party that I'd want to vote for even less. It's undemocratic. The British electoral system is designed to keep the Conservatives in power most of the time, with about 34,000 votes being needed on average to elect one Tory MP, compared to 40,000 for a Labour MP and 1.2 million Green votes being represented by the only Green MP, Caroline Lucas. That's just not fair. And for balance as well, right-wingers UKIP polled nearly 4 million votes in 2015, yet got only one seat at that election. This was how come the 80-seat Tory majority we currently have was delivered on only 43.6% of the votes cast, well less than half. 
yet it gives them such a big majority. Tony Blair originally supported the proportional representation system, which is the most widely used in Europe and which delivers a far more representative parliament. But when Tony Blair won his landslide in 1997, he had a quick change of mind and withdrew his support for proposals for electoral reform. This was really short-term thinking by Blair, as the Tories have won every election since he resigned. This is why Starmer should be backing a progressive alliance to counteract the built-in bias of the first-past-the-post system. With one progressive candidate standing against the Tories in each constituency in the last election, Labour, the Green Party, the Lib Dems, SNP and Plaid Cymru would between them have picked up 77 more seats, enough for a massive majority in Parliament. Current proposals for a progressive alliance would see Starmer as nominal leader, forming a government with just one policy in their manifesto to replace FPTP with proportional representation and then to immediately call another general election once the new system was in place which would bring our electoral system into the 21st century and in line with the most successful European countries. 